Hi there, and thanks for watching this video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build this camera crane. Now a camera crane is a really great piece of equipment. It allows you to recreate some of those dramatic sweeping shots that have really been popularized by Hollywood movies and big budget productions. I've worked with a number of commercially available camera cranes and a lot of them are quite expensive. This would compare to something that's available for about $500, however the total cost to build this is only about 40 bucks. This camera crane is a great size, it's extremely lightweight and very portable. It can accommodate a wide variety of cameras from small flip cams to larger dedicated video platforms. And it's great for any type of uh, video project that you need to add a bit of production value to. It's especially good for interviews, talking heads, real estate video, anything like that. So just like any other project, the first and most important thing you should do is gather together all the materials and tools that you're going to be using. It's also important to have a nice, clean work environment with a good, sturdy workbench to do this project. The camera crane itself is just going to be made out of stock aluminum. You're unlikely to find these particular sizes of aluminum at a home improvement store like Home Depot. I actually had to go to my local uh, welding and machining store and they sold me the pieces I need cut to size and it ended up being a lot cheaper. You'll need about 7 feet of square tubing. Uh, it should be fairly thick walled. This is about an eighth of an inch thick on the, the walls themselves. And the inside of the tubing needs to be about an inch. You'll need a little less than 3 feet of this aluminum channel, uh, aluminum U-channel. It has about a quarter of an inch wall and um, it's about an inch and a half tall and 3 inches wide. And you also need uh, just a little bit of angle aluminum. This is just an offcut from another project. Let's take a look at some of the other things we're going to need. Some other materials that you're going to need are 18 inches of quarter of an inch threaded rod, a quick release plate and a bolt to attach it, 10 feet of aircraft cable. It doesn't need to be quite as thick as I have here, but you will need four cable clamps to go along with it, two turnbuckles, two rollerblade wheels, one turntable bearing, this one is a little under 3 inches wide, 10 to 15 pounds of counterweights with a large bolt, washer, and nut to attach them, 6 countersunk machine screws and nuts, uh, these are 1024 thread, and they're going to need to be long enough to go through your tubing. You'll need 8 button head machine screws like these ones here, uh, these are M4 by 5 millimeters, and they, they're going to be used to mount your turntable bearings, so make sure they're low profile enough not to rub. You'll need four countersunk machine screws, uh, 832 thread, and about three quarters of an inch long. You'll need four quarter of an inch nuts and washers, and you're also going to need some Loctite. In terms of tools, you can make do with pretty much what you have at home, but I have a few things here that are going to make this a lot easier. I've got a uh, jigsaw, I've got a angle grinder with a cutoff disc, I've also got a Dremel with a grinding kind of accessory on it. Um, this is going to be used in place of a hacksaw and a file for a lot of what we're going to do and that will make it a lot easier. But if you don't have these, don't worry, you can make do like I said just with a hacksaw and a file and it'll just be a little bit more work. I'm also going to be doing a lot of the drilling on a drill press, uh, however you can also get away with just having a regular drill. You'll need to have some measuring tools like a tape measure, a square, calipers are good to have on hand. Uh, you're going to need a set of taps and also a set of drill bits. Um, other than that, you'll need a few just standard uh, workshop tools and of course all your safety gear. Begin with the square tubing. Measure in from one end to two and a half inches and square that off. Along that line, measure inwards to mark off where your walls are. My tubing is an eighth of an inch walled, so I measured in an eighth of an inch on either side. Square those marks off so you draw a line that runs parallel to the top of your side walls, like this here. Finish up by cutting off this piece and filing down the cut so that they're smooth to touch. Slide the roller blade wheel into the slot you just cut out and use your square to make a vertical line on the tubing directly down from the center of the wheel. Mark halfway along this line, 
Then make a horizontal line about a quarter of an inch from the top of the tubing that runs three quarters of an inch on either side of the vertical line you just drew. Drill three holes like so. You're going to need to countersink these holes on one side. And then clamp your rollerblade wheel firmly in place and with the drill bit a few sizes smaller, drill holes right through the tubing and right through the wheel. Drive your machine screws through these holes and tighten the nuts on the end. You need to ensure the wheel is perpendicular to the tubing and you can make any adjustments necessary by backing off the machine screw and tightening the nut to pull the wheel in place. Finish up by cutting any excess length off the bolts and filing them smooth. Now do the exact same thing two feet in from the other side of the tubing. Both rollerblade wheels should stick out the same side, which is the top of the camera crane. Now on the bottom of the tubing, on the end without the wheel, create a slot like the first one we made, but make this one 10 inches long. Create a similar slot on the opposite side of the tubing that is exactly the width of your mounting bolts for the counterweights. I did this by drilling two holes in the center, 10 inches apart, and then connecting them with lines that I then cut along. It is important that these cuts are filed down and that they're really smooth, because your fingers and hands will be exposed to them whenever you adjust the counterweights. Once this is done, you can set the tubing to the side. Now you can cut your aluminum U-channel into two pieces that are 10 inches long, one piece that is 8 inches long, and one piece that is 3 inches. As you can see, I did all the cutting with a jigsaw, however it can be done with a hacksaw, a few beers, and a good heavy metal playlist. It is important the cuts are very square and you should also take the time to file off any burrs or sharp edges. Now take one of the 10 inch pieces and along the back measure in 2.5 inches from either end. Square those off and also mark a quarter of an inch from the sides. Join these marks with a straight edge so you draw a nice rectangle like so. You'll need to now cut out this rectangle and file a nice smooth finish on all the cuts you just made. Now you can do exactly the same thing to the other 10 inch piece. Take the 3 inch piece of U channel and cut the sides off it and grind them smooth so you're essentially turning it into a 3 inch by 3 inch aluminum plate. Of course if you have quarter of an inch aluminum plate you could skip this step and just use a 3 inch by 3 inch piece of that. However I found it was difficult to buy small quantities of aluminum plate of that thickness. Moving back to the 10 inch pieces. Draw a line down one of the sides a quarter of an inch from the edge. Measure along this line and mark 9.5 inches, 6 inches, and 2.5 inches. Drill these marks right through both sides of the U-channel and tap all 6 holes for a quarter of an inch thread. Do the same thing with the other 10 inch piece. On one of the 10 inch pieces, make a line like so a quarter of an inch below the bottom of the cutout. This should be done on the end with the holes on the side which are 2.5 inches from the base. Along this line, make a mark half an inch in from either end and drill these out and countersink them from the back.
Make a similar line on the end of the 8 inch piece, also measuring in half an inch from the sides. These marks should be drilled very carefully and tapped for your smaller machine bolts which are 832. Once that's done, you can go to the opposite end of the 8 inch piece and make a hole in the center to mount your quick release plate. The mounting hole for the quick release plate I have here is 1 inch from the front, so I made the hole an inch from the end of the U-channel so everything will line up. You can see the quick release plate won't lie flat on the U-channel, and if yours is like this you might also need to make a small spacer out of some scrap like I did here. Now you can bolt the 10 inch piece to the 8 inch piece and install the quick release plate. This is going to be the front of the camera crane, but you can set it to the side for now and grab the 3 inch square plate. Begin by marking the center and drilling and tapping a 3 8 of an inch hole. Most tripod heads mount to a 3 8 of an inch bolt, however if your particular tripod or stand that you're planning on using for this crane has a different size, make a hole to fit that. Now place the bearings on the plate and use a punch to mark the center of the holes. Make sure the bearing doesn't move while you do this and if it does, re-align it. Drill and tap those marks to accommodate the bolts that you have for mounting your bearing. Now cut two pieces of angle aluminum that are 3 inches long. Make a line down the center of the aluminum and measure in 3 quarters of an inch from the edge. Drill and countersink a hole for your last two machine screws. Line up the angle against the bottom of the U-channel and use a drill to mark the position of this hole. Drill and tap a hole in the U-channel so you can bolt the two pieces together. Do the same thing to the other side so you'll be left with a piece like this. You can now see how the bearing assembly is going to fit together. Drill and tap holes to mount the bearing to the bottom like so. At this point you can also mount the bottom plate in place. Now we're ready to start putting everything together. Start off by threading the quarter of an inch rod through the middle hole, put a nut and washer on it followed by the rollerblade wheel and finally a washer and another nut. Apply some thread lock and turn it until the rod is flush with the opposite side. You can then cut it with a hacksaw and file it smooth. Adjust the nuts to center the wheel and then tighten them up quite well. Thread rod through the top and bottom holes and also through the turnbuckles. And don't forget to use Loctite. Do the exact same thing on the other side minus the turnbuckles. The open pieces of U-channel should be facing each other. Now take two pieces of aircraft cable cut to approximately 5 feet Loop the ends around the threaded rod at one side and the turnbuckle at the other. You'll want the turnbuckles to be about halfway loose when you do this. I didn't have a cable crimp so I just squished the clamp together really hard with pliers. I also used electrical tape over the ends of the cable as they are quite sharp. You're now ready to screw the base to your tripod, attach your camera, and the counterweights. Adjust the counterweights so that when you set the crane somewhere it doesn't drift. You can also use the turnbuckles to change the angle the camera points. Now you're ready to get out and start shooting. Hey everyone, thanks again for watching this video. I hope it was helpful for you. I know it might seem intimidating if you haven't done a lot of the work like all the drilling and cutting and tapping before. Uh, however, it's not hard to do, it just takes a little bit of practice. So I hope you are able to build one of these for yourself and don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I'm going to have more videos like this coming out soon.